Hello and welcome back to my channel. I love to have you back here. If you're new, I'm Stephanie and I do videos on topic of language learning. In this video, I'll be talking about how I plan to learn Russian. What will my Russian study plan be? How do I plan to learn this language? Now, if you're already a subscriber and you're thinking, Stephanie, what? You have talked about this before? And yes, I have. And I've been talking about learning Russian for three years. Yes, you heard that right. And I've been thinking about learning it for even longer than that. So my story with the Russian language is super weird. It, um, it's really, when I was a kid and we were picking what second language to study at school, I just, I just didn't want it to be Russian. I didn't, there was something about it. I, as a native Bulgarian speaker, it sounds like it is a softer version of my native language and so that's really weird and sometimes we get these things with languages that are similar to ours especially as kids and we're like what is that weird thing and so i i went through that and i didn't really want to study it back then and i just i felt that it was like a softer bulgarian obviously that's so not true you know it's a different language but um, the thing is that it just felt very soft to my ear and especially the um, region of Bulgaria where I come from We had a lot of more hard consonants, hard sounds in the west of Bulgaria as opposed to the east And you know people from the east of Bulgaria, they do have a lot of that softness in their speech And so probably Russian is more natural to them, but back then I was like no So yeah, then at some point I decided, you know what, I, I, will study, I should study Russian because this is actually gonna be super easy for me and actually that's what tripped me up a lot of the time I was thinking well this is gonna be super easy so you know why should I bother I can always learn it later and so I would always get distracted by other languages such as the romance languages like I got a huge distraction there and I have a lot of questions from subscribers asking me Stephanie why are you not learning Russian and the thing is I don't know I, I simply I simply don't know. It's really weird how I wanted to learn it for years and then I actually bought my first like intro book to the Russian language and I kid you not, I went back in my uh, Amazon history to check that on the 3rd of October 2019. Yes. And I still don't speak Russian. You will know, if you're a subscriber, you'll know that I've never mentioned it as one of the languages that I speak. Um, whenever I do, you know, either the political speaking in several languages video or whenever I do um, some video on another topic of language learning and I give examples. And you know I will talk about Russian, but I will never count it amongst the languages that I speak because I don't, because I've dabbled in it. And that's all I've done since 2019 when I got the first book. All of that is just simply double in Russian and that's it. Just a little bit of dabbling. And I really want to get serious about it because it's this language that I'm always postponing because I'm like, ah, I can do that always. I can do that at any point. It's another Slavic language, so it's going to be very easy. And so with three years, i was just dragging my feet and just dabbling. I feel like having creating this study plan, you know, will not only help you guys, you know, anybody who's interested in uh, learning Russian, but it is also going to be helpful for people that are just wondering about how to create a language study plan. And I feel like it's also going to be great for me because then, you know, no more hiding. I've put it out there. <laughs> I've shared it with you guys and you can hold me accountable. Oh, please do because. I don't want to do this video again in 10 years talking about how I always plan to learn Russian, never did. So here's the thing. Step number one is the alphabet. I really think that it's a big deal. And I know there are some people that disagree and they're like, well, I don't want to start reading right away. I just want to start with listening. That's what I found best. I've had a few comments like that. And yeah, I get that. But I also think that, for example, even if all you want to do is begin audio based, you still want to get some transcripts you still want to be able to read some things when you read and listen at the same time even if when you're at the level of hello if you're able to read how that word is being written and not simply to hear it you're going to be able to uh, remember it better through more senses through more ways of getting that information in you so I am a big believer in knowing the script of the language that you're learning and with Russian I don't think that it's that difficult and yeah, you might be thinking right now, what the hell, you're a Bulgarian speaker, you also write in the Cyrillic script, like what? And yeah, I hear you, but I also, I learned a Latin script, for example, to be able to learn English. And so I can tell you it was not that hard. It's just not. And 
And I think it also goes the other way around, you know, for somebody that speaks a native language that's based on the Latin script to learn the Cyrillic script, I also don't think that that's a big deal. So obviously that step is going to be absent from my study plan, but you know, if you are not used to the Cyrillic script, do not be afraid of it. It's easy and I'm sure it is because you know, it's just an alphabet and just the way it was easy for me to learn the Latin alphabet, I think it will also be easy for you to learn the Cyrillic alphabet. It is not like some super complicated scripts of Asia or the Middle East. Those are difficult, I'll admit. But when it comes to just learning another alphabet that's, you know, relatively simple, I don't think it's a big deal. So I think the most important thing here, if you don't know the Cyrillic script, is to just get over the hang up of, oh, it's a different script, oh, it's difficult. No, it's not. Trust me. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a schedule and I'm usually a person that doesn't work with schedules. I'm a person that works um, with like, kind of studying whenever I feel like it. But in this case, I feel like I need a schedule. And why is that? Because otherwise, as I told you, I have a problem with Russian. I always postpone it in favor of other languages. I always like push it to the back. So what I want to do is I want to create a schedule and I'm not going to have a schedule in terms of as much as like I'm going to study at a certain time every single day, but I'm going to have one that says that I need to dedicate 15 minutes of Russian every single day, unless I'm traveling or something, because I like to keep flexible and I like, whenever I have rules, I like them to be on regular days. I do not want to have to, like, for example, if I'm going through something in my life or if I have like a lot of holidays coming up or if I'm doing a lot of travel or if I have something huge at work, I do not want to make myself like, oh no, I have to study Russian and to have those negatives feeling about it. But on a regular day, on just a normal day, I have to do Russian for 15 minutes a day. Why do I say 15 minutes? Because I have a full-time job, I have to run this channel, I am studying several other languages, I'm improving several other, other languages, they're all, not all from scratch, but so at the end of the day, I really, what I want to do is to be able to be realistic about my life. This is why I always talk about realistic goals. I have so much going on, but I am somebody that really follows my own advice. And so I've told you many times it's better a little bit every day than a lot at once. Well, that's exactly why I'm going to be making this rule of 15 minutes per day instead of like two hours on the weekend or something. I really believe in that. I really believe in like a little bit every day. And so this is what I'm going to be doing. And yeah, this is going to be a big part of my schedule. And you know, if you're trying to create your own schedule to learn Russian, take a look at your life and be really, really honest with yourself. How much time can you dedicate so that you're not going to break the rule too many times? What tools am I going to use to learn Russian? Yeah. See, here's the thing. I, it's a language, like I said, that is super similar to my own. So I am going to have it even more input based than usual. If you've seen my video on how to learn the language, you know, I'm super input based and in general input, comprehensible input is something I'm a huge believer in, but for Russian, it's going to be even more important for me because there's so many things that I can already understand. I've always been able to understand a huge part of the spoken language. So it's also one of the reasons why I've been postponing learning the language for so long, because I'm like, I already understand so much. But yeah, as a speaker of another Slavic language, that's what's going to be. And if you are already, if you're also somebody that's aiming to learn a language within your own language family, then this video can also be super helpful for you, uh, whether it is Russian or something else. But what I'm planning to do here is I have this book, the one that I told you that I purchased back in 2019. Here it is. Well, it's not a book, it's like a course um, with several books in it and discs. This is one of the little booklets in it. It's like the advanced one. There's also a beginner and intermediate one. And as you can see, there's just like a bunch of conversations and also a bunch of like little grammar notes and drills and stuff. I'm not saying that I'm going to do all of it. Uh, there's some drills that I always skip. There's some drills that I like. There's some people that absolutely hate drills. So, you know, it's about finding what works for you. But for me, I wanted to have that book because it's um, something that I always wanted to, to have in hand because I want to have a reference because it, I like having a reference and I like having a little bit of an explanation in, of the language in particular, because I would say that from a vocabulary point of view, I have a huge advantage with being a Slavic speaker, 
But Bulgarian works super differently from other um, Slavic languages from a structural and grammatical point of view. So the way that things are said in Russian, the way that you express yourself are very different than the way that things work in my native language. So really the only advantage I have here is the vocabulary. And um, so I'm going to milk that advantage as much as I can because I already know so much vocabulary because it has a common root, you know, with uh, other with words in Bulgarian. But when it comes to the structures and grammar, I like a little bit of help in terms of I like to look things up because I need to know why things are a certain way. Which actually, when it comes to Russian grammar, because Russian is a, a language that has very complicated grammar, it's famous for that, you know, all of the cases and the verbs of motion and the verb pairs and just so many different things. It's insane. Um, so I really think that it works very differently from my native language, which barely has any traces of cases. So what I am going to do with Russian grammar is I'm not going to be to focus on it. I am going to be utilizing that living language book I to, that I showed you to just simply look up certain things, look up certain grammar points whenever I care about them. Because as I've always said, you don't have to look it up, but I want to because I would just be way too curious otherwise and I need to scratch that itch. But I'm not going to go over those things where you have like um, verb tables and stuff like that or for example charts with case endings i did that for german back in the day when i was studying in school and i didn't know better and i'd never learned the language by myself and so i did those charts and tried to memorize case endings and it it did not work at all at all so what i've learned from studying german and greek and other languages that have um, cases I'm going to apply to studying Russian, which is that I'm not going to memorize case endings and I'm just going to let cases come to me through lots and lots of input. I am going to be reading some notes on cases and like, when is that case used? And I'm going to be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But that's about it. That's about it. Just to scratch my curiosity, no memorization whatsoever. And I feel like this is important to say if you're studying Russian, please, please do not try to memorize case endings or conjugations or stuff like that. It does not work, especially even if you're able to memorize it, you're not gonna be able to use it in speaking later. It doesn't happen with memorization. It happens with practice, with input, and with stuff like that. So that's what gonna be my approach to Russian grammar. I'm also gonna be doing some Russian books. I think I'm gonna start with this one, which is a two language reader between Bulgarian and Russian. And it's about like stories of night errands, you know, that you go on their adventures and stuff like that. So it should be pretty easy. Um, there's that comparison to Bulgarian, which might be helpful in my case. I did not look for it. I didn't look for like a bilingual book. Um, but I just found it in this bookstore and I was like, why not? Um, I don't think you need a bilingual reader to learn it necessarily, but yeah. Anyways, this one I'm going to be using in addition to the intro course that I showed you by Living Language. And by the way, it can be by Asimil, by Teach Yourself, whatever, doesn't matter what you pick. I'm a big believer that when it comes to intro books, just pick the one that looks the best to you and whatever. It doesn't matter where you get your basics. But yeah, I think this will be interesting for me um, in terms of like reading this little book. It'll be um, not too difficult, hopefully. But I also have a difficult one right here on my pocketbook. I don't, I don't actually have it in, on, uh, in paper, but it's Anna Karenina and... It's a book that I did this experiment and I talked about it in my reading video. But yeah, I read like a little bit of the first chapter and I, I found out that I'm able to understand a huge chunk of it. So obviously, if you're not a native Slavic speaker and you're watching this video, don't think that you need to be able to understand Anna Karenina after just like barely doubling in Russian, because that's probably not the case. But when it comes to literally words in Russian and in Bulgarian, I think that there's a lot of overlap and that's why I'm able to understand so much. So I am going to be using those books. I'm going to be using some podcasts. This is also something that I plan to do. Um, I have talked before about how I like to find them on CastBox because it's super easy, much easier than other podcast platforms to just find the podcast you're interested in listening and then you can listen to it wherever. But in terms of browsing, CastBox is super easy. So I found a few. Um, I have no idea if they're good, but as I said, I'm just starting, so we'll see. I also found some uh, YouTube channels. 
um, that I'm gonna list um, in the description below that I think are gonna be helpful with learning Russian. I don't, again, I can't vouch for them. This is not one of my videos where I do recommendations. I'm just sharing what I found and what I intend to use. Is it gonna be good or not? I don't know. The only thing that I know is gonna be good for sure is Easy Russian because I love easy languages. If you follow me, you know that. And I also plan to use a lot of link because it's gonna help me find the interesting resources. As I mentioned, I'm a beginner in Russian, so I, there are so many things that I don't know. And in terms of like, I don't know what the best resources are. I feel like on link, I can get a lot of links to interesting podcasts, to interesting uh, news or like authentic content in Russian. And it's gonna save me a lot of that search time. And as a beginner, I really appreciate that. So check out the link in the description if you're interested to use link as well. I, I do like it quite a lot. I'm saying that as a person that genuinely thinks that this is going to be a very good idea. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. Um, I just think that it's a good place to start if you don't really know what to find. Steve, if you are watching this, let's collaborate. Another thing that I'm going to use for learning um, Russian is going to be movies and TV. I use that a lot. You already know that. And there's a lot of Russian TV shows that I want to check out. Like um, Kuchnia, for example, is one that I've heard recommended so many times. So I am going to check that out. I also, you know, there's a lot of like audio in Russian on Netflix, be it original Russian content or stuff that's just dubbed in Russian. So I think that that's going to be very helpful for me and I'm going to try that out as well. I do learn with movies and TV a lot. It's how I learn colloquial language and idioms and expressions and how I train my listening. And then in turn, that really helps with speaking. So I'm just going to, I think it's going to be amazing. And so the order in which I'm going to be doing those things, I'm not going to have a set schedule. Like I said, you only rule 15 minutes per day, but it doesn't matter what it is, whatever I'm able to do. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is listening while you're doing other activities. Sometimes I'm going to be able to sit down, do living language and see some grammar notes and explanations. Other times I'm going to be able to sit down and read a book in Russian. Sorry about that. My neighbors are up to some, I don't even know what, but anyways, it's, um, excuse the noise, please. It's, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing also a lot of reading some days. So it really depends on what I feel like doing each day because it is a language that I already feel I understand. I don't feel like I have this need necessarily to marry myself to a certain routine. The only thing that I would like to do is I would like to finish the living language book as soon as possible because it's more intro and then I can dive into more interesting materials and lastly i cannot wait to speak to my russian friends i do have quite a few russian speaking friends and i do want to practice output with them um, but we'll see when that can happen for now i'm going to be focusing a lot on input and then later down the line when i feel more comfortable with the russian language i am going to be practicing speaking it I don't imagine that it's going to be very hard uh, in terms of um, pronunciation or stuff like that because a lot of the sounds found in Russian are found in Bulgarian and the ones that are not, I just need to soften up my speech a bit. Um, so there's that and this is my plan on what I intend to do to learn Russian. Wish me luck and I hope that I can do a progress video at some point. I hope that I can stick to this and I hope that I will finally learn Russian. After so many years of intending to do it, here's my moment. I can't even believe how long it's been since I thought about learning it first. I can't even believe how long it's been since I ordered my first book in Russian. And I really hope that finally I can start to do this. So if any experienced Russian learner is watching this, please, please let me know in the comments what you recommend in terms of resources, in terms of tips and tricks, anything. Uh, I'm starting a new journey here and I wanted to make this video to show you what, how I plan to go about it, but there's so much to learn. I'm sure there's so many resources that I don't know about Russian. Um, so please uh, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, um, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos like that for me and of course hit the notifications bell so you can know when I upload the next one and I will look forward to seeing you in that next video. Wish me luck with Russian and see you soon. Bye. Oh and look what I found. I forgot to show you this. Isn't it super cute? It's like this super old Bulgarian Russian dictionary that's... Oh my god it even smells old. It's just this Look at that paper. I love it. Um, I think it belonged to my grandmother. I'm not sure, but I think it's super cute. Anyways, 
yeah, people these days in Bulgaria, they don't learn Russian much. I think like my, our parents and grandparents did and we don't really. And so um, I think it's going to be an exciting thing. And yeah, I'm not really technically going to be using this, but, but it's a nice antique to have.